As we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 14, 15, uh, which is where we'll be coming from today. Understanding that the church at Corinth was a new, was a new church, and it had started to be infiltrated from outside by the world, by the people that were professing to be children of God, because they had not learned how to reprogram their minds and the things of God. And trusting this God that you just meet is it's easier said than done when you have to be brought before so many situations that you've encountered, that you've seen others encounter, and, and, and things have been established to be true, not fiction. And so you are asked as you come to know the Lord to start making decisions that contradict everything that you know to be true. You know, and we won't understand the, the simplicity of this because it's, it's everyday life. I mean, you've been programmed by this world whether you realize it or not. Everything you've learned, you've learned since you got here. Keep in mind that this world is Satan's king. It was given to him by Adam, and he's been programming mankind to carry out his desires. We were all born jacked up. And that's the thing we have to understand. So when we come to know the Lord, it's a whole new process. Uh, the better way to fix it is you can come to know the Lord with amnesia. Like you, you, you meet the Lord and you automatically get amnesia and you can't get the <coughs> You've seen pictures where people have amnesia. They got people they've been married to for 20 years and sin, and, and they don't know that there's nothing there. And so, if you could come to the Lord with amnesia, which would be the easy route, you wouldn't learn nothing. You'd probably end up back where you were quicker than you got there the first time, you know. But then God knows all that. That's why He's planned this journey of challenges. Uh, these challenges are your spiritual exercise that strengthens your spiritual muscles and awareness so you can recognize what's going on around you and be able to see it from a different perspective. Because you're able to put uh, the true meaning of life in there. And, and this is what he's called the church. And as we go into today, we understand, well, what is the church? The church means a calling out. In other words, as a church, you've been called out of that old world. This is an assembly, a meeting place, where we come to learn about this new life, this new way of thinking, this new way of doing things. This is why we're here. And it's, it's unfortunately, we've been programmed by religion that we're supposed to be here for a different reason. We're supposed to be here to entertain, get entertained, to hear good music, uh, be told how great we are, and get a good pep talk after you leave your money to go out there and just get along. You know, compromise and keep everybody happy. But that's not who we are. We call out of that world. We're supposed to be creating a new community. It's like a family, right? Uh, a person, a man meets a woman, they come together. They come together to create a family. But that family represents a community. And it's a group of, it's a set of ideas that they come together to establish that helps that family maneuver throughout our community and our society. That's why it's important for every family to have an identity. Unfortunately, you have to understand, when the enemy comes to conquer a people, the first thing they do is they take away their history. Then they rename them. And they start to incorporate them into their culture. Very important you understand that. So when Satan took authority over the world, he started the process of reprogramming the world. Yes, sir. Can you shut my door? Yes, sir, shut my door for me. Thank you, young man, for helping us out. <laughs> he starts the process of reprogramming. So when Adam failed, Satan started the progress of reprogramming your mind because your, mo your mind was created to carry out the character of God and the community of God. And Adam was to establish a community here on earth that represented the kingdom of God. That's why God used to walk with Adam and talk with him each day, because he was uh, educating Adam in the ways of the kingdom. And Adam was doing well until he got some company. <laughs> love to keep the laughter going, right? <laughs> but which is true, let's, I mean, let's try it. Right? Adam had no problem. You didn't hear the, you didn't hear the devil mention until you got some company. But we have to understand how this thing happened 
so we can be very aware of how things work. So we can be conscious of what's going on around us at all times and know how to deal with everything in a way because our battle is not against flesh and blood, flesh and blood but principalities and powers. So we have to know how the enemy works. We have, to, we have to know how he goes about doing things. So through this process, Adam was being trained in the things of God. And as he was being trained in the things of God, uh, God was giving him more and more responsibility, as we saw he was naming animals and stuff of that nature, uh, because he was put in the charge, because he's created in the image of God. And man, therefore, is created to rule. We were created to rule the creation, the greatest things, the earth, the fish, the land, of the sea. We weren't created to rule men, though. We were created to serve men. So if we were created to serve men, guess what Kate say what you do? Ruling men, right? So whenever you find yourself trying to rule somebody, it starts to go, oh, wait a minute. I wasn't put in to rule people. So I must give people the freedom to be who they are. But how are we going to get them to do right? You inspire them. You inspire them to change. How do you inspire them to change? By living such a quality, valuable life, people want to be like you. It works. Look at our, all of our movie stars, right? And our actors. Every person just about comes to want to be like one of them. Why? Because we've been trained by Satan in the world of what is valuable. And what is um, being successful looks like. So he paints these pictures of what, the, what he calls successful people and what it takes to make it in this world. And he paints them as the epitome of what you need to try to achieve. And so every child comes here trying to be like somebody. Because that's what he programmed us to think success is. That's not success. Success is being able to be self-controlled. Self-government. Self, being successful is to be able to uh, create and develop. To produce. To be, to, to be productive at what you do. Being successful is having something to identify with. Think about what I said. And all that the enemy brings to our people is giving them something else to identify with. See, that's easy to do if you haven't created your own identity. See, if you haven't created your own identity, you are constantly looking for something to identify with. A lot of our young people are looking for something to identify with because they weren't trained in what their family identity is. And if you, don't, you haven't accepted, it changes with the culture. It changes with the things that you like and dislike. And so identity is permanent. So most families and most people, what they present to you is an image. Everybody's trying to portray an image. And images change. But we've been called out as a church to create a new identity. That's what you have to remember. We are supposed to be developing a new identity here. And so when you see anyone from Day Spring Christian Church, you're supposed to see the same identity. That identity is supposed to be characterized by righteous living. Why righteous living? Because it's in righteous living that God promised to give us everything that the enemy is trying to make us work for, which is already ours. See, success is already yours. Abundance is already yours and God, but he never intended for you to work for it. That's his gift to you through obedience, but if you don't understand your true identity, you won't know how to maneuver through this society to maintain your identity. Just like with your family. You have to train your children in who you are as a family so that they go out, they can recognize things that they're encountering that challenges your family values and if they value your values enough, they will come home and report to you what's going on out there, what they're being challenged with, because you can only be in one place at a time. That's why the entire system has to work coherently together so that all parties are always aware of what's happening so that the chain of command and the whole system can work on your behalf. Like the brother said, now he has to go to the Indian Legion and have a talk with these people, not that they serve God, not that they love God, not that they're Christians, but because they have family values that represent the values of God. 
See, because anybody will say they love God. Anybody will say that they're Christian. They go to church, right? The question is one thing you cannot challenge are my family values. That's mine and mine alone to establish. No one else can tell you what your family values are to be or your values are. That's why you must have them. So when I go talk to you, listen, what you're doing goes against my values. And I, I'm not here trying to make you change. What I'm trying to tell you is this. These values are not up for discussion. This is who we are as a family. And this is what we honor. And we have one life. We don't have a school life. We don't have a work life. We don't have a play life. We have one life, and all these things are involved in that life, and they're covered by this umbrella of values. And these values have to be honored in everything to enjoy the benefits of being a part of this family unit. And to enjoy the privileges that the world has to offer us, which we understand are nothing but our resources. They don't make us. They don't determine whether I'm going to turn out all right if I don't go on a trip and everybody go. It's not going to mess my child up. Y'all boogie it down and they sit over and come and watch it. It's not going to mess them up, trust me. Because our family values keep them safe. Yeah. It's when they start flip-flopping and compromising is when the insanity sets in. Yes. Because they become unsure. They become unstable. And once you become unstable, we can't get nothing from our source. Amen. Mm-hmm. And we've had to learn that personally, haven't we? Yes. So we don't we don't have that we don't have to wonder, okay, I'm gonna talk you give me. If it cause me to compromise my God, I know it don't work. Yes. Why I've done that. I broke that pony well. I got the scars to prove for every time I fell off. Are you hearing me? So I'm not here asking your permission. I'm here telling you like it is because you work for me. I don't work for you. But because we allow the world to dictate to us what our value should be, we become people with an identity crisis. We don't know who we are. And we, we start to believe we have no power or say so in any matters. You don't if you serve the king or the God of this world. We're, the, we're creating a new world with a new king. King of kings. Lord of lords. Name above every name that can be named in every authority and every power but submit to my God, who I represent in all of that same authority. So that's who we are. That's who you are. You have to believe that. That's why God is building a community here, right? And it's in this community that you are able to have a real good time. We're learning to have a real good time and be free, right? Without the drama. You only have the drama when you get people outside of this culture trying to join in with you, right? They question what you do. And that's understandable because they haven't practiced what you do. Because we're learning in 1 Corinthians the biggest problem is their education, their knowledge. What the world has told them that works. That lie that he paints. So he paints that great picture, have it your way. Now, how many of you have been out here long enough to know the world won't let you have it your way? <laughs> If you've been out here long enough to know that the world will not allow you to have it your way, raise your hand, without you having to pay a serious price. See, that's the truth. My child said, look, I'll give you all that with no strings attached. You just be who I created you to be. It ain't like you asking you to do something you can't do. You want to do right, right? That's why you fight against people that do right because you know you want to do right. You tried and you failed, so you figure they lie because you love God just they love God just like you do, right? And so they lie. And we used to. That's what we got going on today, why people are so sick of religion because it's a lie. You say you love God, but nothing in your life says you support it. You think you live in sin and still love God. That's a lie from hell. You know that's right. What team are you? If, you're, if your child tells you got to be at work at 9 o'clock, you show up at 10 every day, what's going to happen? Right. But you know, man, I, I just have to sleep a little late if I want to, right? You can if you own the place. And then if you got a real good crew, you ain't going to be allowed to do it then, even though you own the place. You see the lies we tell ourselves when we come to God? You know it ain't right. You think you're supposed to speed just because you're late? 
speed, you know you're gonna get a ticket. So get mad when the cops stop you like. Yeah, I was speeding, man. Yeah, I'm late for work. Yeah, I don't sleep trying to get that. You come out better to tell the truth. Because he understands understand he's real. He knows every day. He just ain't got nobody to stop him. <laughs> but this is real uh, establishing a new community. Y'all understand that, right? Yes. A new way of thinking, a new way of doing things. That's our identity. That's our power. That's what keeps us. That's what gives us the calm assurance every day that the decision I'm making is right. And it's developed, and it, it is built up of these developed biblical attitudes, habits, beliefs, ideas, and characteristics based on the fruit of the Spirit. These behavior patterns and perceptions that we hold consciously or subconsciously are the basic makeup of the church culture, which consists of everything we do in life as believers. This provides a distinct identity for us as born-again believers. Now, you are developing a distinct identity. Don't let nobody fool you. You're too righteous. You're too holier than thou. You know, you just, just make your people suffer because you don't let them enjoy the world. That's, that's the poison. You've developed a new world that doesn't include all that. This gives us the church culture a sense of overwhelming confidence that we are following God according to His will. Are you all over? Are you over there? Are you confident now that you're following God? Because He's proving Himself to you, right? Are you over, are you confident already that you're following the Lord? He's proving Himself to you, right? Are you confident that you follow the Lord? Ain't no doubt, is it? Is that after what I told you? No, it doesn't have to. I told you you would trust Him. That's why you trust Him. Why do you trust him? Because you tried his word yourself, right? Yes. You made those hard decisions, right? Your family think you're crazy and nuts because you're making these decisions, right? You won't do things that they want to participate in because you know it's a compromise to what you believe, right? And it's conflict. But those of you that are making those decisions, are you recognizing the power that you're now gaining as you make these decisions as it's starting to influence the people in your circle? You start to see those, those bonds and chains that hold them being slowly broken. And you're seeing them now becoming more sensitive to the things that you have to offer and share with them. Now, isn't that exciting? As you see them being delivered from their madness, even though they thought they were geniuses. They thought they had, they thought you were just this crazy quack. Are you noticing how people are starting to come? you like, like, what the... But the Paul said, look, a lot of brothers are preaching the gospel for all sorts of reasons. But what I'm doing is because some of my brothers are now being strengthened to speak the gospel boldly. Recreation is about to change. Are you hearing me? Eventually there will be no games on Wednesday nights. <laughs> Everybody gets a free pass that has Bible study on Thursday night or Tuesday night. Do not be penalized because you're going to that quack church. No marching, no protesting, no acting out of your character, no fighting against people, or being invited to the table. Influencing decisions where people say, well, the guy said, look, I'm on the board. We, we got to break this up. Because <coughs> he saw, he gave up three valuable picks for your son. That because he's so religiously fanatic, couldn't even show up after games. <laughs> and we won the championship against the Giants. <laughs> It ain't no way anybody can say they won because they were good. <laughs> when grown adults play games with children, and they are frustrated to the point where they're cussing children out, because what I see you doing does not line up with who you are. That's not how you play on your worst day. But God, they yes. even cut off the lion's head, remember? Jesus parted the Red Sea, remember? Pharaoh and his army got drowned, remember? He fed 5,000 
but a few are. <laughs> are you with me? Now, he can't touch the hearts and minds of his very creation. Are you serious? Doctors have to come back and apologize, right? And, and, and tell the truth, right? I, I need you to know I had an attitude. I had a problem with you when you would follow my instructions. Now, he can do this. He's being honest for a change. Now, God can work with him because he knows his God is his God is real, they're talking about. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is how we change our culture and our community. We ain't trying to make nobody act like us. We ain't trying to make nobody do what we do, right? These men, because we do what we do to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> It ain't hurting them. You tell them, look, you ain't got to no, no, you ain't got to mess with this. This ain't, we understand. Well, it don't make no sense. I understand it, don't. And I know why it don't make sense to you. That's why I can't explain it to you. Because the more I try to explain it, the crazy you <laughs> Because we're going to places that you can't see. I didn't see it until I got here. That's the thing about God you see after you go. It's all about hindsight, not foresight. There's no foresight in the kingdom of God. Amen. Other than you know God going to do what he said he's going to do. So that's what we do. See, these things are, are becoming the thing that makes us confident. And that's the problem. That's the thing. I'm totally confident now that whatever situation God brings before me, I can actually change it. It will benefit the kingdom. Man, that's awesome. I love that. And I'm going to stop right here. We're going to get ready for a time, for our community. We have the young men to come forward. See, I'm excited to see what it'll be like if I get this. Because you've been so good. <laughs>